Well, for me, sport has been a big part of my life uh, ever since I was at school. I enjoyed it. I went to um, what they call a special school, so all the people that I was with were all disabled children anyway. And as I was growing up, I played uh, football and cricket and table tennis and swimming and lots and lots of other sports. And, and I loved it because, you know, it meant that you mixed in with everybody else. We then went to uh, Stoke Mandeville as a, as, as a team, one of the first junior teams down there. And from then it really kind of grew into competition and then as I got older I then started uh, to play wheelchair basketball and then after playing wheelchair basketball I then saw a demonstration of wheelchair tennis and then, then I thought well this would be a fantastic sport to play in the summertime so in the wintertime I played basketball, in the summertime I played tennis and then as the sport grew bigger, as wheelchair tennis got bigger I then uh, started playing wheelchair tennis all year round and uh, I've had a, had a fantastic career after that. So when I first started playing, um, it wasn't easy, but then uh, I, I was very lucky because of the job that I was doing, I was working full time, but it was flexible. So I used to do shifts. I used to do a seven till three or a two till 10. And that enabled me to then train in the time that I wasn't actually working. And plus the sport of wheelchair tennis is very integrated. So I didn't have necessarily have to have a tennis coach with me. I could go out and play with friends and family. So I could spend, 10-15 hours on a tennis court just playing tennis with everybody friends of mine so that made it cheaper for me and I didn't have to go to a tennis club I can just go and play on my uh, public courts I used to from my house uh, here in Leicester I used to push up to the local park of Victoria Park in Leicester and go and play with a friend of mine and we'd just spend the whole afternoon just playing tennis so for me you know there was a kind of like um, if you want to play at the top end now, there's a lot of investment that you have to do to get the right equipment, the right coaches, travel to the right tournaments. But in order to actually play the game at the you know the kind of basic level, or you know you you don't need to have everything else in place. You know you need a racket, you need a chair, you need a court. Within tennis, I just kind of took it up because when I was actually growing up, the sport was quite young. Um, there was only probably 10, 12 tournaments a year. Um, and then as I got better, the sport got bigger, so the two kind of things went, went hand in hand. Uh, in the old days, when I was actually uh, first started playing, there was only, you only ever played in one wheelchair. So to then go from that to, in the early 90s, people started having two wheelchairs and then started having more camber on the chairs and then having a wheel on the back. Um, I, you know, I feel very fortunate in that I kind of was part of the evolution of the sport as well, and I kind of got dragged up as a sport got bigger and bigger and now as you see it on the on the wheelchair tennis tour or at Paralympics or in the Grand Slam events the sport now is a lot different to how it was when I uh, got involved and and I'm not sure people even then knew how big the sport was going to be even in the old days there wasn't even things like prize money which we kind of take for granted nowadays so you're doing it for the love of the sport because you wanted to actually be the best that you could be. Um, you know, where it's got to now, it's a massive sport, there's 140 tournaments, it's integrated into all four of the Grand Slam events, and it's one of the biggest sports of the Paralympics. So to actually see where it was then, a small group of people doing it because they loved it, to a professional tour where people are doing it because it's what they, uh, you know, they can actually make a living out of it, it's really big, been a big transformation. Uh, coming back to, to the question about your about importance of sport in your life, how does it uh, feel like overcoming your disability? Because you haven't mentioned that part. <laughs> See, I don't. I don't even think about it. You know, for me, it's just it's just part of who I am. For me, having a tennis wheelchair is like a cyclist having a cycle. It's a piece of equipment that you use and. Uh, you know, once you you know, once you're actually in the chair and you've got you know you got your right setting and your right strapping and everything else, that just becomes a natural part of it. So when you're teaching people, um, whether it's in basketball, tennis, or anything else, you have to be able to learn to control the chair and things like that. Um, I don't really see, a, to me, I don't see a disability, but that's maybe because I was born disabled. So it's always been a part of me, and all you do is you adapt the world to you. Um, yeah, there's always going to be challenges around that and people's attitudes and perceptions and everything else. Um, but that's something that 
you can't control anyway. You know, all you, all you can control are the things, you know, the way that you look at life and the way that you approach life. And I think, um, you know, I think it's up to people themselves to go out and achieve what they want to do. You know, there's always going to be barriers in the way, but then how do you actually get around it? And it's a, it's a personal journey. For me, I was born this way, so this is the way that, um, you know, the world is. I can't change everything else around it, but what I can change is my attitude towards what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And, um, you know, you, you're not always going to be achieve everything that you want to do, but, you know, it's, you know, it's about the journey that you're taking rather than the actual end goal sometimes.